It's the Monday Morning Show. Today is March 29th, 2017. I'm Ken LaSalle from KenLaSalle.com, the world's worst backpacker. And it's only about a week and a half until I arrive at the southern terminus of the Pacific Crest Trail, but not until I first set foot on the PCT. That's because I've already been there. That's right. About two weeks ago, I hiked from Scissors Crossing to Warner Springs, 32 miles in 29 hours. Why? Because I was dumb enough to tell my wife that I'd meet her the following afternoon, Sunday afternoon at noon, when she dropped me off on Saturday morning at 8 a.m. I wish I could explain why, but, you know, stupidity sums it up pretty nicely. Yesterday, I released a YouTube video showing my trip, but I was thinking I could spend an entire podcast just talking about one thing, cowboy camping for the first time on the Pacific Crest Trail. And that's exactly what I plan to do in just a minute. First, let me set the scene for you. It's a Saturday night in the California desert. I had stopped at the Third Gate Water Cache with two other hikers named Nightcrawler and Joel. Joel having one of the most elaborate trail names I've ever heard. And while resting amidst plenty of shade and bottled water, I had prepared for myself my dinner, which was an Alpine Air brand pineapple orange chicken. I feel I should repeat this because it's pretty important, and I'll explain why in a minute. That's Alpine Air brand pineapple orange chicken, a dish that really should be called pineapple orange, not a bit of chicken, because it literally held no trace of chicken. It had peas and rice and bell peppers and a little bit of pineapple, Maybe it had dehydrated chicken broth, but when something is called pineapple orange chicken, I kind of expect, you know, some pineapple, maybe a little orange, and oh yeah, some chicken. Not to mention it was horrible, which I will mention now. It was horrible. And wouldn't you just know I have another package of it waiting for me to suffer through? Yeah. Anyway, we eat, Joel moves along, and then Nightcrawler leaves too, assuring me that I'll catch up with her because she hikes slowly. What she doesn't know is that my nether parts are already chafed about as far as they'll go, and I would really like to hike slowly. But, oh well... As it turned out, I did catch up with her, which was good because I was pretty damn tired of being alone. She told me all about night hiking, and this is of great interest because I had told Vicky, my lovely wife, that I would meet her at Warner Springs the following afternoon, and I'm not even halfway there yet. Eventually, the sun's going down, and we find Joel, and Nightcrawler decides to make camp at his spot because he's got a really nice spot. Hell, I would have camped there too. But I had to keep going. Dusk turned to night around 7 p.m., and by this time I had one leg cramping up for all it was worth. But, you know, who needs two legs, right? So I kept going. But at 8 p.m. or thereabouts, both of my legs started cramping. I was Frankenstein walking in the inky black stillness of night lit only by my headlamp. As bright as my headlamp is, I knew when to call it quits. And I found a little spot on the side of the trail at around mile 94. I had hiked from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and had covered about 17 miles. I figured the trail would get tricky as I neared the highest point in my hike and decided to pick that up the next morning. 
This little spot was just big enough for a sleeping bag, not, not even big enough for a tent. It sat directly beneath a small tree, and there was even a little nest of leaves there. So, I decided to cowboy camp for the first time. Cowboy camping is when you just lay out your bed and look up at the stars, or the boughs of a small tree, as it turned out. I laid out my sleeping mat, unfurled my sleeping bag on top of that, and then struggled to get inside. Because that's pretty tough when you're cramping up like crazy. I didn't really know what to do with my shoes. Normally, I'd just leave them in the tent with me. I didn't want anything crawling inside of them when I woke up, so I decided to sleep with them. And my bag is so long that even though I'm nearly six feet tall, my shoes sat at the bottom of the bag and I barely even touched them. Only after I'm in the bag do I realize I'm facing the wrong way because this spot sits at an angle and I'm facing downhill. I'm using my pack as a pillow and had I faced the other way, the pack would have stopped me from sliding and my feet would have been elevated, which I'm sure would have felt great. But, oh well, right? It wasn't like I was going to get out of that bag now. I wasn't especially hungry, so I didn't eat, despite having not eaten much on the way up. As you can imagine, that pineapple orange veggie meal ended up in a shallow grave. Actually, all I wanted was more water. I couldn't drink too much because I had to conserve some for the next seven miles on the way to Barrel Springs. I broke out my iPod Nano, my sleeping headphones, and the last of my water, plopped my head down onto my backpack, and relaxed. Which is when I realized something was wrong with my position. Because I started sliding. As it turns out, my sleeping bag and sleeping pad have zero friction. If they made roads out of this sleeping pad and cars out of this sleeping bag, we'd never need fossil fuels again. And I only realized I was sliding after pulling my backpack down again and again for neck support. I'd slide off of the sleeping pad, pull down the backpack, slide off the sleeping bag some more, and pull down the backpack, and repeat until I realized I was nearly completely off the sleeping pad entirely and laying amidst the leaves. But I was parked there for the long haul, so I slid my way back up to the top of the sleeping pad and resigned myself to a night of tenuous sleep. Actually, it was less than tenuous and less than sleep. Eventually, the stars came out, and I watched the Big Dipper sail right over my head. I stared up at it with music playing in my ears. The Moody Blues, the Beatles, Al Stewart, ELO, the Church, Stan Ridgeway. You know, old white guy music. Watching the dazzling light show that was the stars, as I worried over every kind of wild animal that could just basically step up and enjoy the buffet that was me. It wasn't just that, though. There was also the cramping. My body was sore and had no problems letting me know it. Backpacking, I've been learning, is not meant for people who don't love to suffer. Because you kind of have to, you know? It's a constant thing. I think about my favorite PCT videos and the people who made them. Captain Dan, Joe Brewer, Zach Rotonda, and on and on. I thought about how little I ever saw them struggle. How they made the trail look like fun. And maybe it was fun for them. But that's certainly not been my experience. Before too long, I realize the moon must be rising because the sky is turning lighter. I look across from my camp spot, and I can see the top of my climb directly across from me. 
a soft rise leading to miles of downhill hiking, the thought of which I am practically drooling over at this point. And it occurs to me I can see the trail approaching from both sides. So any mountain lion walking the trail that morning, I could see just fine. How's that for reassuring? Is it any surprise I slept only about an hour? Granted, that's just about the most I've slept on a backpacking trip so far, and this has been my most comfortable camping experience, despite the cramps and the sliding and so forth. At about 4 a.m., I checked the time. I had set my alarm for 6.30, but who was I kidding? I decide instead to get up at 4.30, if I don't fall asleep by then. I don't fall asleep. And so at 4.30 a.m., I reach into my food bag for a taste of a little breakfast. Breakfast that morning was going to be a bag of some terrific trail mix, except that the heat from hiking the day before, along with who knows what else, has turned my trail mix into a melted, fused trail mix ball. The only way to eat the trail mix was to pick it off of the ball. Not an appetizing option. You can probably guess I didn't eat too much. A plainly stupid move. I have to start eating more when I hike, or I'm not going to get anywhere. With the moon above me, I packed up my gear. I grabbed my toothbrush and toothpaste, stepped onto the trail in front of me, and brushed my teeth. From where I stood, the other side of the trail was a drop down a cliffside, and it was also the perfect spot to spit my toothpaste. I don't know if that follows the pack-it-out rule, but sometimes you just gotta spit. While I was there, I peed over the side as well. I consider that watering the side of the mountain. My headlamp back on my forehead, I pulled on my backpack, clipped the belts nice and snug, and began hiking. It wasn't even 5 a.m., and I had to get moving because my headlamp was attracting every bug on the mountain. I might not have slept much, but cowboy camping was actually pretty nice. The night wasn't too cold, and besides, my sleeping bag turned out to be very warm. I had plenty of stars, and I didn't get eaten by a single creature, so, you know, not bad overall. Night hiking couldn't compare to morning hiking, watching the sun come up over the hillsides as it illuminated my path a bit more with every step. I'll be doing that quite a bit more, I'm sure. My return to the PCT at Campo on April 8th is just around the corner. My plan is to take the trail back to Scissors Crossing, hitch into Julian, and maybe even catch a ride back home and have a few days off. We shall see. Until next time, then, be good to yourself, be kind to others, and let's make this world a better place.